Hey, everybody, what's going on? Yeah, you squeaking over yeah, there. Yeah, squeak. Every time I move this chair, fucking squeak. You need to squeak. oil it. <laughs> oil can. You need to oil it. Oil can. Yeah, yeah so my chair is kind of like, uh, it doesn't squeak, but it makes kind of like funny fucking noises. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we were talking about, uh, in the comment section, we we're talking about the next uh, haunting yeah, episode for, that we got to do for tomorrow. And uh, talking about Ghost Soldier. Ghost Soldier is my least favorite episode, but we probably do it anyway. We'll probably do it anyway. Yeah, because I think that's one of the few like old ones that we haven't done yet. Yeah, we'll talk about it. And it's better than having to like dig through and find one. So yeah, we probably will do that okay. one tomorrow. So gotta talk about the Godfather Part Two. Finally got around to doing that. I feel really bad because uh, it was Louie, wasn't it? Yeah, Louis. Sent Louis sent us uh, all, all three. three of the Deluxe. Godfather movies. Yeah, deluxe set of them. Yeah, and so like we did the first Godfather a long time ago, and I kept saying, "Oh, we really got to get around to doing part two. And finally, 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 we got it. But the thing about it was that we got a little bit of a late start last night, and I remembered this movie was long. I forgot that it was three and a half hours long. Yeah, it's long. So we got about two hours ish into it, and I couldn't stay awake anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so we shut it down, and we finished it in the next morning. Yeah, so we had to today. basically get up this morning, like when yeah. we were still in bed, and like watch the watch rest it again. of it. <laughs> Just the timing was bad when we did it, but it's still it's a great movie. Enjoyed it. Uh, the first movie I think is a masterpiece. I liked it, and the second one I think was better. I kind of think, think so too. Like as amazing better. as they both are, yeah. I think a lot of people say that like this one's better than I the original. I think it might be as well. More happens in it. There's a bunch of flashbacks to Vito Corleone when he was young, and played by um, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Back when Robert De Niro was young, young and pretty, he was a pretty boy. I forgot. I yeah. didn't realize he was a pretty boy when he was young. He plays a young Vito Corleone. How he came up, how he became the Godfather. Yeah, you know, who was played by fucking old Wes's name, fucking Marlon Brando in the first one. Shows how he came up, how he killed a dude, killed a black hand enforcer, and how he became the Godfather, protecting his neighborhood. So it's good. It's got a good backstory, you know. Their flashbacks are real good. How he came to America in the early 1900s and everything, and then it goes to his fucking son, the new Godfather, Michael. Yeah, Michael, Michael Corleone, and everything that he he has to go through, and um, just the fucking badass fucking story. Yeah, I really liked... I, the thing about this movie is that this came out two years after the original. Because the original Godfather came out in 1972, and then this one came out in 1974. Now, the part of the movie that's uh, Vito Corleone's backstory, like how he came to the United States and how he became the Godfather and stuff, that was from the novel, The Godfather. But the stuff with Michael Corleone, like in the present day, which is 1958, uh, was actually written by... Uh, Francis Ford Coppola and Mario Puzo, the novelist, they got together and like wrote because Francis Ford Coppola really liked the idea of having like a parallel story. He's like, I really like the idea of like a father and son at the same age, but like while Vito was coming up and there were like, you know, this was kind of like the, the rise of the family. Whereas like Michael was kind of like the beginning of the downfall of the family. So he really liked those parallel stories where they were like kind of crossing like that. And I feel like when this first came out, I mean, I'm not saying that it's like this got, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say this got mixed reviews. This got like pretty overwhelmingly positive reviews and it won like a bunch of Oscars, best picture, best director, all that kind of stuff too. But I feel like if there was any criticism, some people were like, oh, well, it should have just been the Michael Corleone story because you couldn't really get too much emotionally invested because it kept switching back and forth between the two stories. But I, don't, I, feel, I don't agree. Well, I feel like as a couple of years went on, I yeah. feel like it got like a critical reassessment. And yeah. to be honest, like I, you very, very rarely see anyone criticizing anything about this no. movie anymore. It's basically seen as not only one of the greatest American films ever made, but again, like one of the examples where, uh, you know, the the sequel is actually like better than. Although this technically is a prequel and a sequel at the same time. An interesting historical side note in the fucking history of fucking American military history. Saddam Hussein, the president of Iraq or dictator of Iraq, whatever you want to call him, 
his three major influences were Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, and these three movies. They said he loved these three Godfather movies. And evidently he read, read the books too, translated into, into Arabic. But um, those two historical figures and this fictional story <laughs> is uh, evidently what Saddam Hussein had modeled himself after. He saw it as a training manual. And I, I can see what he's talking about. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. He thought the Godfather movie series was a fucking great way of learning leadership and how to, how to forge loyalty. And I can totally see it. But he loved them. Evidently, he had pictures of those guys on his desk. <laughs> like it was his wife or something. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Fucking... <laughs> like her fictional character. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, no, he had, he had, it was a mixture. Evidently, it was pictures of Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and, and then the characters from these movies, like fucking Don man. Corleone and fucking Michael Corleone. Just seriously, if you walk into so, somebody's office and yeah. those are the pictures on their desk, yeah. you might just want to back away. Yeah, like, yeah. Just saying. That's, that's a giant red flag yeah. right there. <laughs> Tom Sykes says, uh, it sucks Michael killed his brother in this film. Uh, also, former female drug kingpin Griselda Blanco named her son Michael Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well the thing about it is that Michael Corleone, this is kind of like his his side of the story is kind of like his moral downfall because the the irony of his story was that he was the one that didn't want to be like his father even though he was personality-wise the most like his father, which is why uh that's why he was chosen. That's why he was chosen. Right. Even though he wasn't the oldest, but he didn't want to do it. No. But the thing is, is you're misinterpret. I think you might be misinterpreting the ending. It wasn't a sad ending. Michael realized how, that he had taken the same path that his dad took. Just because he didn't want to do it didn't mean it wasn't necessary. Because that's what that's what that meant was is mafia don leadership is the same as any other kind of leadership. You're gonna kill people when, every time you make decisions. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or any other country. Every decision you make results in some kind of death. And uh, yeah, he killed his brother, but he had to. There was no other. There was no other choice. Well, I mean, from his, his Fredo was a traitor. From his point of view, yeah. it's like, yeah, Fredo was. He was a security threat and a traitor. Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, he was kind of an idiot, and maybe yeah. he was telling the truth when he said, "Oh, I didn't realize." It didn't that, matter. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like it. It would have been, at least from his point of view, it would have been like a security risk yep, like security to keep threat. him around. Yep, and that was the same with his wife. Kay had to go. Although she didn't get killed. She didn't get killed. He didn't have to kill her. Yeah. He but just, she had to go. He just like chucked her out. She had to go. She was a security threat. She was a risk. She would have betrayed him. So he gave the kids to Connie, his sister, who he could trust. That's how that went down. Camp guy said, I thought Fredo got it in number three. No, he gets killed at the end of this one. And in number two. While well, he's fishing, saying his Hail Marys. Yeah, because that's how he would, like, catch a fish yeah. and everything. I was, for a second, I hadn't seen this movie since I was a kid, probably, or a teenager. And you know how they have that scene? Because you know, you just know that Fredo's going to get it. Like, for a yeah. second, you kind of think, oh, well, maybe Michael will, like, forgive him. Because no. he kind of seems to. But then I was like, I don't think he's going to. No. But then there's that scene where Fredo is on the dock with Anthony, like, Michael's son. Yeah. And they're talking, and he's telling him the whole thing about the Hail Mary, and that's why, like, he caught the fish and everything. And I said, wouldn't it be fucked up if Michael made his son, Anthony, who was, what, like, 10 or 11 yeah. or something, like, kill Right. Fredo, like as an initiation. Fredo, I said, I don't think they'd go there, but I said, that's, I thought about it for a second. Fredo just thinking that he was safe and that he had been forgiven means he's a security threat. He's a security risk. You're supposed to know. No, you're dead. You fucking, you, you aligned yourself with an enemy who fucking, it didn't matter whether or not you, you knew that fucking a hit was going to happen. You still aligned yourself with a, with a, with a possible enemy. You should assume, always assume the worst from an enemy. He wasn't really he just, that bright, he, he though, was stupid. Fredo. Yeah, and I so think that that's go. kind of why I really liked the scene with Michael and Fredo, like, where Fredo got, like, really mad because he was he was older. I mean, yeah. he was the older brother. So he kind of felt like he should have been the next one in succession, and he was, like, resentful toward Michael for getting chosen over him. But the reason that Vito didn't choose him 
was because, like I said, he was kind of like, he thought of him as kind of weak or like not really that bright. Yeah. And what was great is that they talked about, this is all part of the rules, all right? Uh, when they went to go see What's-His-Name in prison, they talked about, you know, you invented, you, you modeled the, the, uh, the mafia after the Roman Empire with capos and soldiers. Yeah, and Frankie Five Angels. Right, and he says, and it worked. You know, and they, well, a, a mafia family is an army. It's run like a military. Uh, it's the same thing, you know, in an infantry unit, airborne unit, ranger, special forces, any weakness, you are eliminated, whether you meant it or not. It doesn't matter. And you can't fraternize with the enemy. That's, that's a security violation. You're gone. You know? Yeah, I mean, just it's from a, a pragmatic just fraternize, Just fraternizing with them is enough. Okay? So, no. He had to go. He had to go. He's a traitor. Afraid. Well, like I said, from from Michael's standpoint in the movie, like, yeah, he had a bunch of people killed, but you could argue that, like, a lot of the people that he had killed, like, um, they tried to have him killed yeah, first. Yeah, this is what's called... This is, <laughs> so, this is what's called in any business, any government or military business, called goal-directed violence. Right. You're, ki you're killing people. You're, it's murder. Yeah. Cold-blooded. But it's to serve a higher function okay it's to keep your society together in this case his society is the mafia not the united states not the marines where he came up he was an ex-marine it's not it, it's his family and the mafia that's what he's supporting any violation re results in death fredo thinking that he was forgiven is a sign that he's weak he's got to go had he been a real mafioso he would have known there is no forgiveness for that. Yeah, he's like, well, I'm dead. You know, yeah. <laughs> he should have done what the other guy did. And I was going to say, he should have done like Frankie did. Frankie killed himself so his family could be safe. Right. Which, that was the Roman way. Yeah, and so, that was yeah. like the honorable way. I right. mean, the, yeah, the, like, um, you know, fucking uh, Hagen or whatever his name is, like, had to come there and... Uh, and say that that's what it was. Hey, right. you know how in the Roman Empire, like they all like slit their wrist in the tub or something like that. They get like forgiveness, that. and their families and then, were taken care of, and you know, and, and they're then, like, yeah, yeah. And he was cool with that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's next right. Scene, he's down there in his fucking tub. So, like I said, he knew the score. Right, because that was a sign score. that you had atoned, and that you weren't a coward. So your family was forgiven. Which because was I mean, Frankie kind of. Um, got on their wrong side too. Yeah. So, because they were all kind of in on the plot, right? Frankie was, yeah. and uh, and uh, Hyman Roth, the guy, and Fredo. They were all kind of in on it. Yeah. The wife, she just basically wanted to leave. I don't. She didn't know anything about the assassination attempt because no. she almost got killed too. No, she's just chickening out, and she couldn't. She couldn't be. Well, trusted. I she mean, she couldn't keep her cool. Well, the so thing about, I mean, to be yeah. fair to Kay, like, to her yeah. character, if you remember in the first movie, like I said, Michael didn't want anything to do with being in the crime family. He wanted to go straight. He wanted to go legit. He joined the military. Um, he wanted to have a normal life. And she kind of signed on to the marriage and stuff like that with the understanding that they would have a normal life and not be in the crime family. And he even told her in the first movie, you know, we're going to go legit, like the business is going to go legit in five years. And at the start of Godfather 2, it's been seven years and that still hasn't happened. So he's gone back on his promise. So I think she kind of has every right, because she wasn't in the crime family. She, Like I said, she didn't sign on for that necessarily. But, so I can't really blame her for like wanting to leave. But... You know, the fact she kind of, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to say she did it in a fucked up way, but he didn't, you know, he didn't want her to leave. He basically wanted to keep the kids there and he, that's what he ended up doing, you know, like, especially after she told him, it's like, Hey, I didn't have a miscarriage. I aborted your kid. Well, that's why she had to go. Yeah. Cause you know, you, well, the Italians are Catholics. All right. That was, a, that's an abomination. And he wanted another son. He, yeah. He already had a son, but. He wanted another son. Yeah, he had a son. And a you daughter. have to have a bunch of sons. He knows. Yeah, because you got to have a bunch to pick among. Yeah, yeah. You need three or four of them because they're not all going to be the same, and one of one of them, three or four, is going to be better than the other than the other ones. 
So you need a stable of sons to pick from because there's an error rate. He knows, he knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's why he was so excited about her right. having another one. And she says, oh, no, we're not having more sons. And he's like, oh, you're going to be replaced. You're out. You know. Now, I, now I'm kind of interested. I don't think I've ever seen part three. I think I, I don't think I've I think I've seen it, but I, I was young, so I probably I, I know I don't remember anything of it. I mean, um, I I was just watching a video um, on that anal. I think the channel is called The Vile Eye, and he does yeah. videos called Analyzing Evil, and he picks like fictional characters. Yeah. And he was doing Michael Corleone, and he talked about the character like through all three movies. So he yeah. went a little bit into what happened in part three as well, but I yeah. don't think I've ever seen it. Now. In in Michael's defense, he couldn't leave the mafia. They couldn't go straight. There's just no way. Well, nobody to, can no. you, really. Like once to you're do that, so, to do so is to leave all your allies to the mercies of your enemies. They because they have been fighting your the mafia enemies. So where's their protection going to come from? They have to flip and become part of the other families or flip allegiances, and it's just and and that's gonna, really going to. Uh, fuck up their incomes so hey so michael as a leader can't walk away from all these guys he's gotta keep them in money and keep them safe he's a captain of a ship he can't just fucking abandon the ship the, uh, there's no way he was born into it and it's been going on for two thousand years he's not going anywhere yeah, yeah in a lot of ways i kind of feel like that's what's almost i almost a little bit tragic about his story is that in the first movie, you could tell that he really wanted to be his own person and he wanted to like get away and make his own life. But there really wasn't any way of, I mean, he, so much of his life was like mapped out for him and there wasn't really any way to escape from that. Yeah, but if you go back and look at how Vito, how Vito came about, he had no choice either. Which yeah. I think that's, he didn't want to do that, which is I think why he chose Michael. Yeah. Because Michael would be indifferent towards it. Which uh, he, which means that he's not a guy who's seeking power. It's kind of thrust on him, which means that you, he's more trustworthy. With That's power. kind of what I was thinking. It's like because yeah. because the fact that some of the other ones wanted it yeah, and Michael didn't. Right. Yeah, anybody that wants power, you that's not them. the person that you want to put right. in power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. So he's, so he's like the reluctant. You can't, this is, history shows it over and over again. You cannot trust men that seek power, and um, you can't trust weak men with power. And his other brothers were weak. They well, and weakness. particularly Sonny, who got killed in the Sonny first was one. was weak, too. He was just real um, Reckless, hot-headed. Hot-headed, yeah. which is a form of weakness. Yeah, he couldn't and, like, and, be trusted either. Right, and he, wasn't, he was not intellectual at all, so he, you just couldn't trust him. And then Fredo was the opposite. He was kind of weaselly. And weaselly and, and, and weak willed and, and a little bit dumb. Dumb and you just so not very perceptive. Can't trust a weak man with power. You you can only trust a strong guy who doesn't really want the power. It's thrust on him. And it's a responsibility, it's a burden. And he's trying to keep his team alive. That's who you want. It's you know what I mean? He doesn't really want it. Alright. It's it's a great movie, and that, that asked me, that's why Saddam liked this shit. I don't think Saddam wanted to be president in a certain way. And look at his sons. <laughs> his sons were fucked up. And I really, yeah. I mean, I really liked, I kind of feel like, you know, the story with Michael is kind of, you know, the, the heart of the movie, but I also really liked seeing the rise of Vito Corleone yeah. as well. And Robert De Niro, I think this might be my favorite movie that I've seen him yeah. in. I don't know. He's been in a yeah. lot of great movies, but he was fucking great in this. I'm going to reverse what I said. Saddam had one good son. Kuse was good. Uday was fucked up. Okay. Which, yeah. Kuse, Kuse Hussein probably could have could have been a leader, but not Uday. No way. Uday was like the perverted version of fucking, oh, what's his name? Fucking Fredo. <laughs> Couldn't trust him around women. He was a rapist, you know. Stradog78 said, I always believed Kay lied about having an abortion to get away from Michael. Oh, that's a possibility. I hadn't considered. Maybe. Yeah, that might have been. Maybe. Maybe she just told him not to, like, to get him mad so he would, like, tell her. Didn't matter. Out. Just her saying that was enough. 
Yeah, because that's that he is slam a door on her face. That's the last time you see her. But, but you might see her in part three. We'll see. Yeah, I don't remember if she's in. Like I said, I don't yeah. think I've seen. Well, and I liked that too, like where he just kind of shuts the door in her face because that calls back to the end of the first movie where he <clears throat> goes in, like when he's accepted his role as you know the successor, like to his dad, and she's outside in the living room and he slides the door closed, like yeah. while they're in like having a meeting. So I liked that it had that like continuity to it, like they were almost calling back yeah. to that scene from the first yeah. one, where it's like she's still like on the outside looking in, kind of. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I think that was really good. But yeah, I really, really liked. I really liked the just the way that they juxtaposed the two like you know what i mean yeah it went back and forth but i thought it was like thematically good like the way they the way they went into and the story of how Vito became the godfather was actually like really interesting yeah like him kind of you know him well his family got killed by a mob boss in sicily right yeah and so he was like basically left an orphan and so he came to the u.s and worked his way up you know what I mean? Yeah, and then he go, he eventually goes back to Italy to avenge his family's fucking murder. Too. Oh, that was great. That was a great, great scene. Too. That was a great yeah. scene. Like that whole thing where he comes back and he's like, "Hey, I oil, oil sales, olive oil, so, yeah, yeah, it didn't, yeah." It's not what he was there for. <laughs> that was good. But uh, no, the way I interpret the ending is that fucking um, uh, Michael realizes that he was just like his dad. That his dad yeah. was just as kind of unwilling. But and he didn't really revel in it that much. You know what I mean? It was just like he, and that it was, that command was a burden, you know. Yeah, that's was, a good way of putting it. it. A that's a good way of putting it. And then, and you could yeah. argue that that's like you said, the best person to do that because yeah. it's like you don't want somebody that's going to enjoy that shit because no, that would it, be messed it up. It was a burden to him, right? And like I don't he, like to have to kill. He felt that shit, Fredo. I don't right. like to have to do this and that and the yeah. other. Like, it's, it kind of, like, takes pieces of your soul, I yeah. guess. But he understood that the necessity of it. Yeah. And it takes a certain kind of strength for it. Yeah. And Which... The, and, the, and, I, and if you ask me, Vito made the right choice. Sonny would not have made it. Sonny would have been a dictator and a fucking... He would have got a lot of people killed. All right? And the yeah, because he was impulsive. He didn't, yeah. really, he didn't really he didn't think about it. He wanted to go to war his... all the time. He didn't really want to think about his actions, yeah. like yeah. how he would have gone. Would have wanted to go to war all the time. He would have been running after his subordinates' wives and mistresses, which would have caused a lot of fucking problems. And uh, then you would have had old fucking Fredo. Fredo would have just fucking run the fucking business into a ground, a death spiral, and he would have gotten run over, and and all of his subordinates would have been killed. You had to look at it from a military standpoint. So, Michael was. The center choice, the the balanced, measured guy. He does not even really want to be there, but he's got to get this done. And, you know, like, who's the dude? Sisyphus, pushing the rock up. Sisyphus. Sisyphus, that's right. He's like, that's what they're talking about. And he finally realizes that this shit is a fucking burden. Because look at how, look how fucking Vito Corleone, Don Corleone, he, he actually went out happy, eventually, because he gave up power. And he died of a heart attack chasing his little grandson around in the fucking fo- in, yeah in that's the, right in, in, in the fucking flowers in out in out in the backyard, and uh, that was a good death, and that was the best death a mafioso could ever have. Yeah, because family daughter. was the most yeah. important thing to him. Right, and he was he he died a successful don. Yeah. Right. So you, you know he didn't get it was like... all family oriented. So that's that's how I, that's my take on all this shit. I thought it was a very honorable movie. Masterpiece. The shots that were done in this, the fucking, their period, it's a period piece, and they'll give you big old long fucking shots down a city street, and it'll look just like the 1930s or the 20s or whatever time period they're shooting at. Score, fucking fantastic. Acting, 10 out of 10. There is no bad acting in this. There's really not. Nope. Everybody in this is amazing. Yeah. It's Everybody a masterpiece. Is amazing. It's a masterpiece. Both movies, masterpiece. So I want to see three. Yeah, now we got to watch part three. Yeah. But like I said, I had forgotten. I had forgten when we were watching this last night. I was like, because I yeah. turned it on. I was like, oh, shit, that's yeah. right. This is three and a half hours long. <laughs> you oh, can dear. learn a lot from the movie. It's about leadership. You know, you can learn a lot about the movie. Uh, you can grow from watching the movie. It's a good movie. 
I mean, there's yeah. a lot of it. Doesn't necessarily have to be about the mafia, but it's just about anything. Well, it applies to anything in general. Yeah. Leadership in general, family yeah. in general, yeah. like just this kind of like honor, relation. loyalty, family, right. like all that kind of stuff. Um, morality. There's morality in it. Yeah. He's making the same decisions that an, uh, a head of state would make. It's the same thing. Yeah. Just different tactics. Jen Dubois said Sonny made good sauce. He did. Uh, Stradog78 said, in the book, Kay and Michael's mom have parallel scenes where they uh, pray for the souls of their husbands. Oh, yeah, okay. I read the book, but I was a teenager, and I don't remember a single goddamn thing about it. Slasher Fred said, uh, the line, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, uh, is a very iconic line. Yeah, that's right. That's And I had forgotten that it came from this movie. Uh, Jen says, Godfather 3 is a hard watch. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know. I haven't seen it. I've, I know, like, some of the stuff that happens in it, but, um, yeah. I, I mean, I definitely do want to... But, I, like I said, I don't remember what happens with Kay. I was thinking the whole time, because, like I said, I've seen this movie, but it was a long time ago, and I don't remember anything that happened in it. So I thought Kay was going to get plugged also. And then I was like, wait, would he go there? Yeah. I mean, he but probably he, he, would. He wasn't pressed that far, though. He could divorce her and get rid of her. Yeah. And his wife could take care of the kids. And, and she, she wasn't might, like, and it's not like she was in she the mob a, and it's like she yeah. could have him killed or anything yeah, like no, that. Yeah, no, she wasn't an active threat. Right. So she, you could separate from her for a while and she might change her mind and come back. Because remember, because cause his sister changed her mind and came back. Yeah. What was her name again? Not Kay. Uh, Connie. Connie, yeah. And I was played just, by Talia Shire. Yeah, and I was remarking, she, she somehow, Jenny said she's, she that actress has somehow remained, uh, related to, um, Fucking um, Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage it's someone. Nicholas Cage's aunt. Okay, and she's cute as hell. Just a cute, cute Italian woman. She was in fucking the Rocky and everything. Yeah, just a Adrian. She's, uh, yeah, he played Adrian. I she's think these Adrian and this were like her most yeah. iconic role. But she's been in a million things. But I mean, yeah. those were her two most famous roles. I think just a cute Italian woman. But I forgot that. Yeah. Well, and she's actually Francis Ford Coppola's sister. Okay. They're all related, like the yeah. Coppola family. And like I said, Nicolas Cage is her nephew. Because I looked it up earlier. I was like, I was pretty sure that's what it was, but I wanted to check. I was like, I know they're related somehow, but I couldn't remember. Uh, Zach says, I love how willing they were to use legit dark lighting and make things kind of hard to see. Yeah, I mean, the, the cinematography in all of these is so beautiful. It's just like so, it's so warm. It has like that really nice like gold yeah. tone to it well what they do is they do a lot of classic american and Ita well classic italian american and, and american interiors with brown walls with white and gold trim there's a lot of that and then you know just the so yeah they don't care about the dark dark and soft they're uh, and the they, dark is like really rich yeah yeah it's, it's like good. a warm rich dark. everything looks like you're inside of a damn italian retro italian restaurant <laughs> yeah. but not in a cheesy way no no and i'm and i love all the shots that they did because obviously they did shoot some stuff like really in italy and i really liked all of that stuff too yeah. like with all the fucking all that gold um like sandstone and all that kind of stuff or whatever yeah. it is that was like really really nice it's an italian american masterpiece the flick and um it's fucking written so far like just classic literature it's almost like classic yeah, it's like Greek Shakespearean, yeah, yeah, or, Greek or like mythology. Greek mythology or something yeah. like that. Which, well, and there's a reason why people right. still adapt those stories or like do variations of those stories because they're universal. And yeah. like even nowadays, thousands of years later, people still understand yeah. all of those emotions and all yeah. of those events, like the way that people feel about them. It's not any different. You could retell this story a thousand years from now and people would understand it. They yeah, would, oh, they totally. Would, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zach says the cinematographer on these movies, uh, Gordon Willis, directed an awful thriller in the '80s that had Talia Shire in it called Windows. It has a psycho lesbian stalker. I sure we gotta see that. Well, I gotta see it. I don't think I've ever heard of that, yeah, which is crazy. See, who said this? Who, who's talking about this? Zach said that. Zach said this. Damn, Zach, we gotta have you on the fucking show, bro. <laughs> we need this new co technology that we can have people calling in sometimes. <laughs> And Camp Guy said his office in scene one is dark, but the lighting is so good you can see everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything in this is... And I really liked the scenes, like I said, where they had, like, Michael and um, and Fredo, like, in the shot. And it's, like, the big window in the background that's kind of, like, stained glass. 
And especially when you can like look out and see, and it's like winter outside, and you can see all the snow out there, and they're just kind of like in silhouette or like yeah. in shadow. It's like it looks so so beautiful. Yeah. What I thought was great is during the beginning they had this waspy ass fucking senator talking shit. He didn't he didn't want these damn greasy oh, yeah, hair that... mafiosa around and shit, you know. <coughs> and then eventually they set his ass up fucking with that dead hooker in his hook, and then uh, see now yeah that's the thing because I was, I like, was damn they killed one of their own hookers for that shit. Fuck. Here's the thing though, like I was reading the Wikipedia page and yeah. and stuff, and it was saying or I was reading some other reviews of it, and yeah. it was basically saying. I don't know if it came out and said that, like, the mob had set that senator up, like, mm-hmm. with the dead hooker and everything. Mm-hmm. I thought that was the implication, though, because... That's how I thought happened. Yeah, because he was there, and he's like, well, he had been to that girl before. And he knew her, and yeah. he's And he's like, I don't remember how it happened. Okay. But I think that, like, the way that I was reading about it, at least, like, on some of the, um, like, the other plot synopses, was that that had just happened. Like, that they didn't set it up. Okay, that he did it. That he just really did do it. Okay, so the second I thought it. that they set it up. That's what I thought. Like, I thought they drugged him or some shit. And then, and then killed like, the girl killed her. And you did it. Right, And yeah. then told him that he did it. Because if, so ha- if it was the CIA, that's what they would have done. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. well that's what I thought. Right. And because it... So it was just dumb luck. I'm not sure, Basically. but I'm just saying I thought the implication was that they had set that up. Yeah. That's, and specifically right. because he said I don't remember how it happened. So right. I thought that they had done it that's because it was one of their I mean it was one of their guys uh brothels, right? Yeah. So I thought, yeah, that'd be like pretty then easy. He goes, I mean, she yeah, has you'd no have rel- to And then Tom comes in and goes she has no relatives, nobody knew that she was here, so you know, we're good. Yeah. Right? Uh but I was like, well, isn't that convenient? Right. But he said he'd been with her a couple times. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was under the implication that the mob had killed that hooker. I thought so, to too. To set him up. And see, Jen said that, too. I thought it was a setup. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, that's Because I, I said that would be too much of a coincidence but if here's it was the just thing, that man. guy that and did that. And they were like, oh, lucky us. Here's the thing, <laughs> though. you got to give the Italian mob credit where credit was due. They, in general, protected uh, women and children. They, they were kind of civilian women and children were off limits. Um, yeah, they ran brothels, but they didn't kill any of those girls, you know, for, as far as I was concerned. They tended to like those girls, so I thought that was kind of out of character. That I was kind of like, wait, they killed that girl? To set that senator up? Said, That's pretty fucking hardcore. That was kind of out of character for the mob. Right. So maybe they weren't really that type. Um, so maybe he did do it. So he must have done it. Yeah. But see, I thought, I don't know, I just thought it was a setup. Because I said, yeah. well, they needed some dirt on him, and he'd been kind of like a shithead to Michael, but you like, come in there, yeah. like, swinging his dick around. And I was like, okay, bud. You know what I mean, LaBelle, about the whole, like, yeah. Vegas casino thing, like, the licenses that he wanted. So I was like, oh, well, it just, it would have seemed like too much of a coincidence for yeah. that senator to, you know. One of the things that <clears throat> people don't realize is that the Italian mob kind of went out of fashion over time because they weren't that ruthless. Um, Colombian drug cartels later on in the 80s kind of outdid them in a lot of ways. They were willing to do a lot of shit that the Italian guys weren't willing to do. And those Italian guys got so wealthy during the period that these movies came out is that they they were able to go straight. They They didn't really need to be criminals anymore. They owned so much property they owned so many restaurants and fucking businesses that they didn't really need criminal activity anymore. A lot of them just outgrew it. They were replaced by other guys. So that, I was just kind of going like, damn, that's kind of out of character for the Italian mob to kill a hooker. Well, Camp Guy says them. she OD'd accidentally and they made use of the situation. Okay, that makes so you sense. See, that would make that more makes sense. More sense then. That it was a deception. Yeah. That she OD'd and then they made it. And then look, they made it look, made it like, look like he had he murdered her. her. Yeah, that, they would that do makes that. a lot more yeah, sense. Because I was sense. like, that seems fucked up if they would just kill her for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, because it's like, you know, the oh yeah the women in the brothels, that was their, I mean, they that was like part of their business. So why would they? Yeah, and they had to have loyalty the for the girls. And Camp guy said just a guess. Yeah, well, but it, that, that makes sense, though. Yeah, and you can't force a woman into a brothel. They have to be willing. Okay, so you have to have loyalty from them, and, have, and the only way to do that is that if they're making money and they're being treated well. Okay, so it makes a lot more sense that she OD'd, and then they set it up to make it look like he had killed him. So when he wakes up, that makes a, that fits more in the character of of the of the Italian mob. They were deceivers. They would use deception. You know, yeah, just, yeah, they'd do that. Fucking right. 
But like, yeah, like I said, because that would have been really fucked up if they yeah. just killed. Because she didn't do anything. Yeah, because the other girls would know. I mean, she and worked then that for would, them. That would fuck up the loyalty type deal. Yeah, you think all the other girls? The would other girls fucked like, oh, up. Shit, she's like, hey, holy shit, yeah. we gotta get the fuck out of right, here right, because right. it's like, what if they decide right, to, to get us that to way. get us that way, yeah. like to fuck over somebody else? You know what I mean? Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Right. You know, your morale is gonna be really low exactly. at your fucking brothel. Exactly. So, so yeah, that actually that makes more sense. I don't know if that's what actually happens, but it does make more sense. I'm just saying that most of the plot synopses I read said that he had just done that, or because in the books, if you go back and look at uh, fucking. Um, the dude who was Luca Brasi, who was from, Vito, from the from first, the first movie, one, yeah. Vito Corleone's one of his best hitmen. His backstory was pretty fucking ruthless. He threw his own baby into a damn furnace That's because right. it was part Irish, that his girlfriend was Irish and he was not having it. And from, based on that act, he became the mafia's version of the devil. Okay, he was the devil. And... Um, they used him as a as an assassin, but they didn't like him. He was not a popular person. He was a pariah in a certain way. But yeah. he was just he was it was he was like Zeus unleashing the Kraken. You know what I'm talking about? Like where's the Kraken? <laughs> right. Bring out the Kraken. He was he was he was that okay? Because um, the Italians are family based. It's a Latin culture. You know, I'm growing up in a Latin culture myself down in Brazil. No, it's family oriented. Over and over again, they talk about family. You can have a wife, but you don't leave your wife. You can have mistresses, though, but don't leave your wife and your children. They, they were family-oriented. And don't make it look bad. Everything had to be traditional. Yeah. They were right-wing. They were right-wing, conservative. Well, the way, thing it, about it was, way, you know? I mean, even though they were doing illegal shit and were yeah. doing fucked up shit and having people killed and stuff like that, they did have an, a code of honor. They yeah. weren't just doing stuff. Well, because... Right. They were running a business. They were trying to yeah. make money for everybody, even though it was a business on the wrong side of the law, perhaps. But you can't just have somebody out there killing people at random no. or doing fucked up shit or like, yeah. you know, because that's that's going to fuck up everyone's like ability to make money. Yeah, and and they're running a business. These they're running these businesses to to support and feed their families. Okay, so these are these are family guys. Now you also have to yeah also have now here's another thing though, which is something that had to be pointed out, and this is just. The, the way the times were also they were ethnocentric there was a big difference between an Italian person and a non-Italian it kind of showed the Anglo people that were marrying into the Italian family fucking they kind of didn't approve of them that the women yeah, were cause, slutty cause Con fucking, well Connie brings that one yeah, yeah. and then didn't Fredo bring that one yeah the Fredo brought the fucking floozy chick that she was hot <laughs> but she couldn't stay sober She's and embarrassing all everybody over the dance floor. <laughs> and um <laughs> and and they could and it, the Italians at this point considered black people just to be marks. That's who you sold your drugs to, and, and they came out and said, "Well, they're animals anyway." So you know they're not, they're ethnocentric. Okay, they're they're very, anth but because they're family centric and their families were Italian. <laughs> okay, so that's just the way they were. Yeah, they and were it, very like tribal in that yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camp Guy says, Roth gives Michael influence and casinos in Cuba, announces it to all the families, then Michael kills him. Yeah. Is that correct? Well, see, Roth was fucking Michael over, though, like yeah. behind his back. And dealing with Roth was kind of going out of the Italian thing because Roth was just Jewish. He was Jewish. Yeah, he was a mob boss, too. He was a but mob was... boss, but he was a Jew. Yeah. Now they, But they respected him. They respected him. But... Uh, but like, but like old Sonny, and not Sonny, but the other guy said, he said, he said, he they always they always respected Roth, but they never trusted him. Yeah, he wasn't Italian, right? Okay. Well, and he was one. He was one of the ones that was trying to get Michael assassinated. Right. I mean, he was behind right. that um, the assassination attempt, right. where not only Michael but also Kay almost got killed because they shot in the bedroom windows. Yeah. So when he found out that Roth was behind it, and then later on he found out that Fredo knew about it too. Although Fredo, like I said, said that he didn't know that it was going to be an assassination attempt. He just thought it was going to be yeah. like some little back deal and like behind here. Yeah. But Because Michael didn't really want to invest in Cuba because he thought that the revolution was going to happen. And yeah. he was right about that. So he thought it was like a dangerous proposition. There's a lot of accuracies in this tale. I mean, if you think the Italians were the only mafia, you're fucking wrong. The Irish Americans had their own mafia. Yeah, and so did, everybody and, had a mob. And so did the Jews. <laughs> Jewish Americans had their own mafia too. Uh, so, 
but there was some crossover. Uh, they worked with both. They worked with, with Italian guys and Jewish guys. But, uh, yeah, fucking a good Italian, a good Jewish mafia movie was fucking Uncut Gems. Adam Sandler. Yeah. Fucking great. It's, it's, it's damn, a different that movie, time. That movie was so good. Yeah, I want to see. I got to buy that shit. I don't own that one. I got to buy it. <laughs> uh, if somebody sends it to me, uh, we will fucking do a story. We'll do a fucking review. Because we did talk about it a little bit because we saw that in the theater. Yeah, I loved it. it came out. And it's like, yeah. Adam it's really Sandler's really best movie. And like, it's a great, it's a great gangster movie. And it didn't didn't get any fucking play. I, I guess feel, because I it's Jewish like, gangsters. Well, and like, oh, we can't talk about that. Well, okay. everybody talked about it when it yeah. first came yeah. out. But then, like, it seemed like everybody... Like, because I, I kind of thought that it was going to get... Um, they talked about, like, oh, maybe it'd get nominated for, like, some awards. And I think it did. But I don't know. I feel like then everybody just kind of forgot about it. But it was Sandler's it was, best flick. Yeah. Best I flick. mean... Like it's I said, a good the motherfucker movie. can act when he wants to. I don't yeah. really, I don't really like a lot of his movies because I don't like his that. comedies aren't that good. No, but his that comedies shit aren't funny. There but was man, that... fucking that was that was the fucking the, the the Godfather. That was the Jewish Godfather. It pretty much was. Yeah, that shit was good. Like I said, that is one of the most anxiety-inducing movies yeah, that I have I ever watched. I was worrying the whole fucking Me time. Me too. Me too. Of him fucking gambling with other people's money. Like just my my stomach hurt like literally the whole time I was watching it. (laughs) I was like, "Oh my god, I don't like this. I don't like this not one bit." I got it, and it was based on a real story. The guy who wrote that story, he's writing it about his dad. His dad was a Jewish guy down in the New York fucking Diamond District who was just fucking people over and doing fucked up shit with his money. I mean, because you're just watching him just going, "Jesus Christ, dude! Do you have like a fucking a death wish or what?" And he and he made it. He made it until the very end. Well, made I was going to say. Very end. Yeah. yeah, he made it until the end of the movie. Made it to the very end. Irish got a hold of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good, uh, movie. good movie. Oh, my God. Uh, Strawdog78 said, Once Upon a Time in America was about Jewish mobsters. Great movie. I don't uh, remember that one. Tammy said, Tom Hardy plays a Jewish mafia boss in Peaky Blinders. I Didn't still been. I, it's a, that's a series. It's okay. I've actually been wanting to watch that series for a long time. It's Good. like I've had numerous people like recommend it. Tom to me and Hardy, man, because... is my favorite actor, man. He's my newest favorite actor. He that dude can do anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with that guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Ben says Uncut Gems is amazing. It's a fucking amazing. The main character lies to cheats or steals from literally every single <laughs> other character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's just like totally. I'm just like, do yeah. you really think? Do you, how long do you think you're going to be able to get away with that? That's what was yeah. so like anxiety induced. I'm just like, just stop it. And the dude is every negative <laughs> stereotype, but <laughs> but that's what that character was, man. That's well, it character. works because it he w- doesn't come across as no. <laughs> he doesn't come across as a collection of stereotypes. He comes across as Th- a that's real what he was. guy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. just happened to kind of be like that? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? He doesn't come, which is like a hard. That's a that's a hard. Uh, some line people were, to, some people were pissed off about that, but Sandler's Jewish and fucking. This is what he wants to that's do. That's a hard fucking, line to walk, but I think he yeah, did it successfully. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, he can act when he wants to. I was impressed, man. One of my favorite he can movies. Act when he wants to. One of my favorite movies. I, li- I really like. We that saw it in the movie. theater. We were blown away. We we're like, God. Man. I was like, God damn, that was. And there was a lot of fucking symbolism in, in it and everything, you know, and fucking. The, the basketball player is selling the fucking Furby. The Furby fucking yeah, necklace and shit. Furby I was necklace. just fucking, God, <laughs> I gotta see that shit again, man. Yeah, we really need to see that. Yeah. Uh, ben says Peaky Blinders is great. Yeah, I'm gonna get yeah. around to it, seriously. I just, literally... Even a couple years ago, I had somebody recommend. It's like, oh my god, you have to watch Peaky Blinders. It's like I said, it's a series, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, I got to get around to that. And then literally the other day, I was watching, uh, what's that other channel that I like with the Halloween girl on it? Uh, Jade the Libra, yeah. and her and her husband, they're like, we just watched the entire run of Peaky Blinders, and they were like so excited about it. And I was just like, shit, now I got to fucking watch because it's over now. So I don't know how many seasons it was, but I was like, okay, well now I can watch the whole thing because it's like complete. Uh, Jen says Tom Hardy is amazing. Yeah, please yeah. review Bronson. I think we did. We did it. We re- reviewed. I'm pretty it. sure we reviewed it because um, Sophie, yeah, Cindy uh, friend of the show, yeah, uh, she sends... comes over. She's gonna be coming over in a couple of months. Going to get her ass on the fucking show with us like last time. Yeah, we'll see. So if we she can get doesn't her on the check show. it out. And run off. She did a live stream with us. When she got y'all were fucking chatting her up too much. Too many dudes are flirting with her. So she like, I gotta she, go. she I gotta, ran away. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for so. Yeah. But yeah, uh, she sent us Bronson. So, yeah, we reviewed it. It was probably, like, a while back. Probably, like, a year or two, I want to yeah. say. But, yeah, I love uh, Bronson. I love Bronson. Yeah, it was I, th- such, I thought we reviewed movie. it. I'm pretty sure we did. 
We did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we reviewed it because I, yeah. I, I remember talking about how it was kind of shot in a Clockwork Orange style. Yeah, looking, yeah, yeah. Um, a motif, you know, which it's almost like the sequel to a Clockwork Orange, but it's real. Yeah, because it's based on it's a, real a real dude. Character. It's a real based on a real dude. It, it's it's about fucking England's most notorious fucking convict. Great flick. That dude's a loon. Yeah, but but it's it's a fun movie though. Yeah, <laughs> but Hardy, Tom Hardy, he's great, man. He can gain all kinds of weight and fucking get big doing steroid cycles to become Bane, or fucking become these other dudes, and then he'll get skinny again and do another character and everything. I think he's just a great character. Made a great Mad Max. Um... Everything I've seen him in, I enjoyed him. Where he played Reggie and Ronnie Cray. Um, yeah. Just. That was a, that was a great movie, yeah. too. What was that I'll, movie called? Legend. I think Legend, that was, yeah. yeah. That was a good movie, too. And, you know, the British are the best actors. They got the best acting schools. They're, they're fucking really good. Um, some of the American studios, they have the big budget and a lot of skills, but you got to have British actors in there. American actors are just. A lot of, you know, not all American, because there's a lot of good American actors, too, but I'm going to say that... The British are the most versatile. Yeah, I kind of feel like They're better. Is. I mean, they, they yeah. do. Like I said, they take it goes it back seriously. to Shakespearean shit. They take it fucking, They take the craft extremely seriously. They, you know, most Americans get on there because of the casting couch. They, they get fucking weinstein into a movie. Eric Weinstein. Well, or just because they look Weinstein good. You Weinstein off and you get in the movie. That's, a, that's all it is. Yeah, I think yeah. They're, people are more concerned about what they look like rather than yeah, like their yeah, acting yeah. talent, maybe. Zach says, fun fact I learned recently is one of the potential directors for the first Godfather was Sidney Fury, who did The Entity and The Ipcrest File. Imagine Weird. that movie. Yeah, I don't know if that would have worked out so well. we got to review not, The Entity again. We should, because honestly, yeah. didn't well, we talked about the movie yeah. on our very first episode. But we didn't. We talked about the movie in relation to like the real case, right? I kind of feel like we talked about that. So I don't know if we've ever just reviewed the movie. Yeah. I feel like we probably have. He but said he's gonna know. go look at Bronson our Bronson review after this show. I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure it's there. I think we did it. I'm pretty sure we did it because I remember. We didn't do it, man. Get back with us, fucking, <laughs> and, and remind us. But I'm pretty sure we. did I mean, it. we've done like a million movies, so sometimes yeah. it's hard for me to remember. Yeah. Because I do movie reviews, too, like, on my other little channels and stuff. So sometimes I lose track of, like, what movies we've reviewed because we've been doing this a long time. So uh, Ben says, Once Upon a Time in America is great, too. That's the one he was talking about that was, like, a Jewish, the Jewish monster. Yeah, yeah, so everybody says, yeah, we should watch that as well. I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever seen it unless I was, like, a kid. Strawdog78 said Tom Hardy was great in The Drop with James Gandolfini. Didn't Underrated. Nobody really talks about Didn't it. Didn't see it. That's another one. So let me write that down right, because it's like down. I don't think I've even heard of that. Okay. We need to look at like Tom Par Tom Hardy's like Wikipedia page and like yeah. check out all this because I'm sure he's every done a lot of stuff that I haven't seen. Every role I've seen him play, I was <laughs> fucking I was impressed. It was like God damn, that dude's good, man. And what's funny is that he started off as basically what we would call pretty boy, little pretty boy. Yeah. Um, he looked like fucking just a little skinny pretty boy and then he got fucking big and he started doing other fucking roles and just uh no i just i, I think he's a great actor he's a great actor also tammy said and he was great in fucking venom yeah i thought he made a great venom you know his accent isn't always on point but it's good enough good enough yeah it, it's fine yeah it's good enough tammy says uh you have to watch lawless with tom hardy in it Never seen that one. Yeah, that's another one I need to write okay, down. Yeah. Okay, well, let me what, keep, that, what was that about? Let me keep this over here because <laughs> I'm just like writing down. Stardog78 said, yeah, The Entity and The Shining. Yeah, that was the first show that we did. Yeah. Lawless. Oh, so we did Entity already. Well, I uh, see. Long but the, time ago. Well, we didn't. We kind of talked about the movie, but we kind of talked about the Doris Bither case. Okay. Like in relation to the movie. We need and to we do talked the, about The Shining. We need, too. we need to do a proper Entity review. I, if we haven't, I got I got to check. I'm pretty sure we haven't. Uh, it's based on real life moonshiners. That's how, that's right okay. up here. Okay. That's right. Oh up yeah, here I alley. love that shit. Yeah. Um, has anyone you wrote it down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right well, there. Right. Has anyone seen Tom Hardy as Capone? Yeah, I was hearing about that. Like I remember seeing like all the um the trailers and stuff for it, and it looked good. But Tammy said yes, you guys did Bronson. Okay. I thought we had. Yeah, we did that. I thought we had. But um, but yeah, so. Right, no, so. I got a big man crush on, on fucking Hardy. He does. Yeah. Every, every movie that he's in, I'm like, man, that motherfucker's, he, you know, he, he impresses me. He's impressive. He, well, he's he, versatile like actor. I, yeah, he has like a great uh, range. Versatile. 
He has a great range. He's doing fucking Reggie and Ronnie Cray. They're two twins and fucking one, and they're very different. One's kind of a svelte fucking gangster dude, and the other one's a big fucking brutish gay dude. You know what I mean? And they're he fucking he sold me on it. it. Was like, man, that's that's a fucking badass gangster story. He tells the fucking Italian mob that he likes Italian boys. That he had one all bent up. <laughs> yeah, came up, fucking was going on, and the Italians were like, oh, "Okay, just, that shit would not normally fly with the Italians, but they just kind they're of like, like, well, I'll well, allow we're it. gonna, okay, all right. That's what, <laughs> they would have associated that with like prison culture, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tammy says, uh, "LOL, I've got a big woman crush on Hardy." <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, he's but uh, uh, yeah, he's pretty. He's awesome. He's a very he's awesome. good actor. Very good actor. Fucking. Just with his, how he delivers the character and just his physicality. How, how much, what drastic changes he can do at a physical level. Like I said, I will always respect an actor for going all in like that. Yeah. In such a short period of time. Yeah. Which I mean, terrible that's, for your health. Like I said, I'm sure that's really, really bad for your health. It's like, I'm sure, like, yeah, they have money and they get a lot of money, so I'm sure they have, like, supervision, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're not just doing it willy-nilly, but... You know, hopefully they have, like, doctors and nutritionists and stuff that are, like, watching out for their shit. But still, yeah. I mean, still, drastic changes like that are just really not, really not good. But we trained for Bane, evidently he was really upset. Because he would have had to have gained so much weight to become that character. And I saw some clips of him in the gym training and throwing barrels and throwing weights and fucking picking things up and... I don't know what he was on, man. He, but to gain that much weight in the amount of time, he got pretty big for Bane. And uh, it could, he had to have been on trend. Trend could do that. But then to come back down off of that, and, and he returned to kind of normal proportions. Although he, he wasn't that huge, it's just that I think my proportions might have been bigger than his, actually, uh, out of Bane. But he sold himself as being even bigger, larger than life. And that's yeah. just part of the damn... Because some of that has to do with, like, how you carry yourself, yeah. how, you know, how you're standing, how they right. shoot you, they like, shoot with the you. camera, yeah. what and you're wearing. The voice, that kind his of voice stuff and stuff, yeah. and what he was wearing. He sold himself as being much bigger than he really, actually, he really is. I mean, I have stills from him shooting all that. Behind scenes, he's not that big, uh, proportionally. I think my proportions are bigger than his. But when you look at that movie, he looks fucking intimidating. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's yeah. it's all kind of like angles they shoot him from that that helps too. Zach says, "I wonder what the results are like whenever Christian Bale gets blood work done. Imagine being the poor phlebotomist, right? <laughs> yeah, the same kind of thing. It's like, hey, I'm going to be in the machinist and I'm just going to like live on gum for six months and weigh eighty pounds, yeah. and then I'm going to like play. Well, didn't Christian Bale?" Didn't he play, I want to say, didn't he play Dick Cheney? And he, get, and he yeah, got, he like, got super fat. fat. Fuck, and he looked just like Dick he Cheney. He really did. We saw that bitch in the theater. Yeah. And it was That fun. was a good movie, actually. It was actually. a good movie. It was fun to watch. Fun to watch. Yeah, it was about called Dick, Vice or something. About Dick Cheney. Yeah. The Dick Cheney story. Pretty much, yeah, it was kind of, well, it was kind of about that whole time period, but yeah, it was, it was about Dick Cheney, and he gained, yeah, he got super fat. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, he was unrecognizable. Yeah, Vice. That was, yeah, we saw that in the theater. That was good, actually. Jen said, your drinks always look refreshing. They are refreshing. It's just tea with vodka. Yeah, this is, (laughs) it's iced tea with vodka. Yeah. Because, hey, it's the weekend. Yeah. Although, we we drink on the weekdays, too, so who are we trying to kid? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he was great as Cheney. Yeah, I thought he was too. Like he looked like spookily like him. I thought really. Well, he really delivered good. it. The way he yeah. delivered those lines, it sounded like Dick Cheney talking. I mean, I kind of want to see that good. again now. I remember really liking that movie. Like it, like it, yeah. fucking. I thought it was fucking hilarious. It was kind of like a black comedy, wasn't it? Kind of, yeah. It was kind of a black comedy. <laughs> I feel like. But it was kind of like a docudrama too. Yeah. You know. But like it was also kind of funny. Like yeah, it always, it's, it's talking about how Dick Cheney got got into his position and and really there wasn't there's not a lot what's funny is that you had these people that get into government power up in washington dc and they portray themselves as like very important like they but the, no a lot of them come from pretty humble beginnings there's not much to them it's, it's it 
it's, they're almost actors into themselves, actually. Well, There's the thing there. about a lot of times the people that are kind of like uh, that you would see as like, oh, they're important or something like that. It's like a lot of times they just got lucky. They were yeah, just like in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And There's not you know a lot to I mean? them. So. Uh, Jen says vodka is good every day. It is. Yeah. It is. It's good. It's for a you. flavorless, unobtrusive <laughs> liquor that you can put into anything. And it's yeah, just we like, keep oh, okay. in the in the refrigerator in our little mini fridge up yeah. here uh, in our little break room right there. We have uh, a big gallon jug of tea and a big yeah. gallon jug of lemonade. And we'll I put, made. Ooh, I, la- I was gonna say last, last night, night for us. Tell him, Jenny. He made iced coffee. Yeah. With vodka in with it. Vodka. While vodka. we were while we were watching Godfather too. It was caramel, <laughs> caramel and vodka. Yeah, caramel and vodka. Of Dunkin' Donuts, iced coffee blend. Grains is what I used. Poured them over ice in the fucking coffee ninja. In the coffee. Ninja. In the coffee ninja. <laughs> there's a fucking okay. There's a series. They were delicious. There's a series of fucking uh, kitchen appliances that are called ninja. Well, yeah, that's the brand. One of them is a food processor that I have called a Ninja. Yeah, right. we have one of those. So, like, yeah. we have a little one and a big one. This, the other one I have is a fucking coffee Ninja. It'll make coffee by the cup. It'll make espresso. It'll fucking. Fu- it, it'll, I mean, yeah. It'll froth up your fucking milk. It, it does all this fucking cool shit. All that right? sounds dirty. But here's how It'll fucking weird milk. this is a Ninja's an assassin. Yeah. Back in the day when Kawasaki came out with that motorcycle, people were calling it the Ninja, and fucking Kawasaki's like, well, well, wait a minute, hold on, why are we calling this thing a Ninja? That's like saying Hitman. Okay. But that's cool, too. <laughs> Only in America is that shit cool. Imagine if you fucking, in Japan, they got a machine called the fucking Coffee Hitman. And they got an Italian buy that. dude. They got I, a, I would buy they that. They got an Italian dude. Fucking, <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> with a gun and shit. We'll like see. Coffee Hitman. No, for real. Like, now, we should... Does anybody have a lot? Somebody's got to have this. Does anybody have a line of coffees? Yeah. Like, well, because espresso and stuff, that's very Italian, right? Yeah. So you have a line of, like, espresso Hitman or something espresso. like that's Hitman. like Hitman espresso. Torpedo. Somebody's got to have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he's on. a torpedo. Yeah. They could even have a Godfather-themed line. Yeah, right, yeah. Like, you know, you'd have to, like, like, skirt around copyright somehow. <laughs> like, you couldn't really... You couldn't use the same font or nothing yeah, like that. Yeah. But, you know... <laughs> Corleone coffee or some yeah. shit like that. Then you got another motherfucker. <laughs> fucking 45, six guns and shit. It's called Outlaw Coffee. Yeah. That shit would still sell here in the United States. Well, yeah, it would. That shit would sell. Like well, a, the thing about it is that... on the fucking back of a fucking horse with fucking his guns and his fucking cowboy hat and shit called shit Outlaw. Well, you know that Outlaw there's... Coffee. You know that there's a horror-themed coffee line. Actually, they have a shop. I don't know if it's still open, but they had a shop in Atlanta... But um, they sell it like all over the country. It's like they have a zombie flavor, and yeah. it's like their, their design is like really, really cool. Actually, when we went to that horror convention, Scream Fest or whatever the fuck it's called, a couple years back, they had a big booth there, and we're like giving yeah. coffee away for free. And man, it was delicious. But yeah, yeah um, uh, we did do an episode about ninjas. Ninjas. Yeah, we called, did, didn't we? It was called Bullshido. Well, wait, Bullshido. was that a separate one? Because I thought we, we did the Bullshito one, Bullshito. and that was about, like, fucking uh, Ashita Kim and, like, all that. Yeah, and yeah. The Black Hand Society or whatever yeah, the fuck. Yeah, yeah, Black Fight, Dragon, Black right. Dragon Right, but society. I thought we did a separate one on ninjas. Or did we not? Did we all just, know, like, I, put it together? I think it was all in one. Maybe. Bullshito. Bullshito. Which is bullshit. Bullshito. <laughs> Bullshito. <Yeah. laughs> Stradog78 said there's a Death Wish coffee. See, I figured that they probably had to... <laughs> Well, because if you're going to do, like, that kind of, you know, uh, artisan kind of coffee, like, small batch, you need something that's going to, you know, g- attract attention. I mean, don't they have one that's called, what the fuck's it called? Death something? That has, like, a skull and crossbones, and it's supposed to be, like, super, super strong or something? You know what I mean? Yeah. You said ninja weapons come from farm tools. Look, there were no ninjas. Like, we, we, went, we, we went ahead and talked about that. There weren't any ninjas. Well, not in the way that the movies not portrayed the them, them, anyway. No. There was a legend. <clears throat> Saad says, hey, Tom. Hey, Jen. Uh, hey. Do you know about G.E. Kincaid and his cave? No. That does not sound that familiar. familiar. Yeah. But if you fill me in on the details, I will yeah. look that up. Actually, you know what, uh, what the show... You'll be excited that our show on Wednesday night is going to be about, like, is going to be UFO kind of stuff. Oh really? So okay, cool. you'll probably like that. 
Right. Ben, shut it down. Ben says mummies? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Zach says, uh, oh, also, Francis Ford Coppola is probably going to be releasing a new movie soon, a sci-fi movie called Mega- Megapolis. Okay. And I guess he's self-financed basically the whole thing. Hmm. Well, shit. So he's making it, like, exactly the way it was. Okay. I'm interested yeah. to see that. Interested to see that. Um, all right. So I guess we're going to sign off. Yeah, we should. So because, okay, so tomorrow's Monday, and that means we're doing A Haunting Mondays. If you're new here, that means we're going to talk about an episode of A Haunting. Like from, what channel did that start out on? A&E, Discovery? I don't know. Whatever just, the hell. I don't the know. Ghost Hunting Show, or The Ghost yeah. Show. So for some reason, we're really into that show, and we did uh, a lot of it's episodes about movie. it back in the old days, yeah. and it's like we recently like classic started show. redoing that. Yeah. So we usually would ask for recommendations for which episode to do uh tom sykes gave us a recommendation to do ghost soldier because he we'll said he rewatched it yeah and it wasn't as bad as he remembered we'll do it so i guess we'll watch that one and we'll kind yeah. of like see how okay. see how that goes i kind of remember it but we haven't seen it in a long time so it'll probably be ghost soldier about a chick that fucking she inherited a picture of a fucking guy of a, of a guy fucking in a uniform or she found it in a garage sale yeah and she put it up Something. on the wall and it and it brought the and it started people. haunting her started haunting her the picture was haunting yeah. her, God damn it, from yeah. the garage sale. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do that tomorrow. So come on by at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for us to talk about a haunting. Thank you for dropping by today, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>